Okay, so yeah, hold on. Okay. Oh. Okay. Anthony, get, get one step closer. Okay. Yeah, okay. Great. But actually, I'm going to walk you through it a little bit. All right. Um, so let's just start with the, before we get to the camera. Yep. Talk about, it's not really a helicopter. How do you describe it? It's a quadcopter. 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 Um, well, this is a, a DJI Phantom. It's a sort of an entry level quadcopter. Although it's ultra um, The electronics in this are better than almost any. And when I say that, the company put um, much more sophisticated electronics in here than it's ever been at an entry level. And at $700, this can be changed up as well. Uh, it's very stable. It has multiple controls. If I put it in GPS mode, it means it's being tracked all the time by the, the actual GPS satellites, just like in your car. And if you let go of the controls, it will stay and hover wherever it is. Even if the wind is blowing, it will tilt into the wind and hold its position. So it's very, very stable. It's very good for a beginner. And the idea the company came up with was they'd make an entry-level copter like this. It's built specifically for the GoPro camera, which you see here okay. at the bottom. It was built specifically for the GoPro. Um, I put extra, with any hobby, I put extra electronics in it. Um, because I started off with just the copter and the camera hanging underneath. And as it was flying in the wind, the camera's moving. And also, so you get the, when you're looking at the video afterwards, the camera's moving, the video's moving. And also, I could never tell what I was filming. I'd be up in the air and I guess I'd want an angle down and I'd fly and I'd get it and uh, I didn't get what I wanted. Um, so what I ended up doing with any hobby, you keep adding on little pieces. Um, so I added on inside of here a um, 5.8 gigahertz transmitter that plugs into the camera so that now you can see with my goggles what the camera is looking at. So now I could see what I was filming, mm -hmm. but I still had it fixed. Mm -hmm. And it was still wobbly from the wind. Mm -hmm. So the company kept upgrading and I, they offered this gimbal that you see here. Mm -hmm. And it's two axis. It allows, as you can see, see how the camera stays perfectly level. Mm -hmm. So even when it's windy, that camera stays perfectly level. So now when you see the video, um, it's perfectly set. And when I'm aiming it now, also with the, they added an extra controller here. As you can see, I can aim the camera up or straight down. And it um, was flying over the capsule the castle. I actually um, was filming straight down. Um, you could see the spiral staircase on the inside. Yep. Um, so you've got comp control of the tilt of the camera. You've obviously got total control over the helicopter. Yep. And you've got, I mean, what about, we talked about some safety protocols. If you lose connectivity with the, with the quadcopter, what happens? Yes. That's one of the best things about this helicopter, quadcopter is if you're flying it and you fly out of range, it will automatically, if it loses contact with this, it will automatically come back and land based on its GPS where it started, its exact location and height. So it lands perfectly. Um, I've only done that once, flown out of range. It can go about a quarter of a mile. And, but based on um, you know, the FAA regulations that are still evolving, in 2015 is when they're supposed to come out with a full set of regulations. But for now, they say you should be at least three miles away from that airport, which we're about three miles from the airport, Worcester Airport. Um, and they say you should not fly more than 400 feet. Now, this will go a lot higher than 400 feet. So I never, you know, I, how high did I fly today? Probably 200 feet. I didn't go very high. Do you know that? Is Are you getting uh, uh, well, telemetry at all? I do not yet. However, the company mm -hmm. just came out with um, another module you can stick inside, and it will give you all the telemetry you want to know. It'll tell you distance away from its starting point, how high you are. It'll tell you with a compass inside where you are relative to yourself. So if you're over there and you want to know how to get back, it'll tell you how to turn and come back. Hmm. Um, they're also putting, they're constantly updating the software and the firmware um, with extra safety protocols, like you can program into it the max distance you want to fly or the max height, and it will not fly higher than 400 feet. So 
they are getting this ready for the regulations when they come out. And I am a very conservative flyer. And most people who have these are. We don't generally fly over crowds. We, uh, if I have to film, if there were people here, I'd fly off to the side. Mm -hmm. um, when, if I crash, and I have crashed many times, it's always into a tree. Because like when you're going around the castle, and you're filming around the castle, I'm looking at the castle, but I'm not looking beside me. And I could fly into a tree. It's always into a tree. <laughs> Um, but it's never come flying out, it's crashing down from the sky. Oh, no. On its own. No, yeah. never. And matter of fact, if the battery runs low, it will just automatically land wherever it is. Oh, really? Yes, it'll automatically land on its own. much better video, but with the extra weight and the extra electronics, you get less flying time. When I first bought this, and I just had the copter, it would fly about 12 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. Now, with the electronics, it's also powering the, the GoPro, um, I can probably fly for five to six minutes. So, Also have a plan for using it on this big trip you're taking. Yes. That was part of the idea, right? Yes, that was the other half of the equation. My wife and I have been planning for 20 years to take an RV trip around the country for two years. Going all the way down to Florida, then Key West, then working our way through every state up to Alaska. And one of the th other reasons I got the quadcopter is to film this country from the air. I could think of nothing better than flying through the St. Louis Arch or seeing Mount Rushmore from the air or any of the other great sights in this country. So that's really, and what I like about this hobby also is because we're going in an RV, we have limited space. This whole copter with all the controls and electronics and extra batteries fits in a carry-on piece of luggage. So it's very small, so it's easy to take with me. safety a little bit. Right. What are the safeties that are built in? And, and we'll get to the FAA maybe after that. Right. Uh, well, safety with this is 
was a top priority for them. They wanted to make sure that, one, you didn't lose it, um, but also you always had full control of it. And so that you don't lose it, they built um, the GPS in with the compass so that one, before you take off, it actually, you rotate like you saw me do, that sets the actual compass so it knows where it is. Then, before it takes off, it actually sets the, um, the home position and the GPS. And you could tell by looking at the LED lights, um, the way they're blinking and the colors they are, how it's actually operating. And when you just have the two green LEDs flashing, you know now it's fully ready to go, it knows where it is, so once you take off, if you ever lose sight of it or lose control of it, it will just come back and land on its own. In the home spot. In the home spot. Wow. Wherever it took off from. Wow. I mean, it'll, it'll be within a very narrow range. And as you point out, these things have really taken off. Not oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but the FAA hasn't caught up yet. I mean, what are the regulations on this? Well, right now, uh, the FAA is working on the regulations, and uh, hopefully by 2015, they'll come out with the full set. But the, the regulations I've been adhering to, and everybody I know that has these is adhering to, you want to be about three miles from an airport, you don't want to fly into any flight paths, that'd be a disaster. Um, but also, you don't want to go over 400 feet, so that you're never in any kind of flight zone. And I pretty much adhere that 400 feet's really up there. And when you go that high, you, you can't see it. Normally, when I fly, for safety, I always fly with a spotter. Because I have goggles on, so I can't see the copter itself. So usually my wife goes with me, and I brought my friend Gene here to actually spot for me today. And I told him before I took off, if I go up and I get near a tree or something, tell me. So that I always have a spotter. And I think most people do that for safety.